Hey everybody, Patty Ann here and Daisy. Anyway, I'm here today to show you something that I found this morning that was free. Um, I got the letter A, and when I went back to show you where you could get the letter A to make these things, it was no longer available for free. You could buy it for a buck and a quarter, but now they've got the letter B for free. So what they say is for 24 hours you could pick up the letter, and then after that it's a dollar and a quarter. Well, I got the letter A, and I made this. I think it's a super cute little coaster and if you're not aware or don't know how to do things in the hoop like this so the back turns out really nice I'm going to show you how to do that so all I used old blue jean material and some little uh, bat batting that looks like this you could probably use felt although the other thing that I like to use was this these are sheets that come of stabilizer I the first one I did I used cutaway that was a mistake. I'm going to try tear away now because it'll be a lot easier in the end to just tear this away. So let's get started. I'm going to go into Embrilliance and show you what it looks like as we do the stitch out, the you know, stitch out, stitch simulator, and then we'll get started. And I'll show you exactly how easy it is to do this, especially if you're a newbie in embroidery and you want to see how nicely you can make something, the front that looks beautiful and the back as well. And this is going to be a perfect coaster for me for outside. So let's get busy. Okay, here we are in Embrilliance. And here I'm going to do the stitch out or the stitch simulator to show you. You can also print off this page. This page shows you when the stops are and what's happening then. There are 10 steps here. And if you look up in the objects panel, there are 10 steps here as well. Now it's this gives you step-by-step -step instructions, but in case you're not used to doing this, they might seem a little confusing to you. So step number one says, start by who's hooping your stabilizer. Again, I'm using tearaway this time. And then it says to run the placement stitch. So let's look. We have our stabilizer in the hoop. All we're gonna do is run the placement stitch. It's only gonna stitch right out on the stabilizer. Then the machine's going to stop, and you're going to put your batting down over that placement stitch. Make sure that the batting covers all of it. Then you're going to run the tack down stitch for the batting. And after that's done, it's going to go back and forth a bit. After that's done, you're going to take it out of your machine. Don't remove your stuff from the hoop. Just take it out of your machine and trim around the batting, right up by the stitching. Then you're going to lay your fabric right on top of the batting. And again, you're going to run a tack down stitch all the way around a couple of times. Then you're going to take it out of the machine again, cut around it. Don't take it out of the hoop, just out of the machine, cut around it. And I'm going to demonstrate this in the, trimming the excess material. Next comes the uh, flower petal details. And this is gonna take a little bit of time. Then you're gonna run a placement stitch for the circle in the middle, which I didn't change mine at all. I just let it run that. I, did, I wasn't doing a placement for any fabric or anything. I just let it run these steps. I could bypass them by hitting the plus minus arrow on my machine, but I just let them go ahead and run. I really didn't want to put any fabric in there. I just wanted mine all to be blue jean. So after that's all done, then it will do the letter, then the pretty satin stitch around the center, and then let's see what step is this. This is step number nine, I think. Yes, step number nine is uh, the back panel tack down. This is really, really, really important. Before you do step number nine, you're going to take your hoop out of the machine. Do not remove anything. Turn your hoop over and place your backing fabric pretty side up so that the bad side is down towards your hoop or the ugly side. And if you want to, you can use a little bit of tape to play, tape it in place. That's probably what I would do. Um, then it's going to tack that backing piece on, okay? 
And after that, then the next step will be the final stitching with this beautiful satin stitch and then the little decorative part on top. So let's go over to the machine and I'll show you all these steps. Okay, what I have here is the piece of stabilizer. As I said, I like to use the ones that come in pre-cut sheets sometimes. Feels like I don't waste as much. So this is on my four by four hoop. I have links for them down below. I love these magnetic ones. They're expensive, but once you use them, you won't want to go back. Anyway, I'll stick this in here. And remember step number one, if we look up here, um, step number, whoopsie. Step number one is going to be to put the um, placement stitch on here for my batting. Put this down and start stitching that. Okay, I used a lighter thread than probably I should have, so you could see it maybe. Um, maybe you can see that. But what I'm going to do is to make sure that my batting, I place it here, and it's going to cover all of that placement stitch. Put it in here and make sure it's down nicely. And if I'm worried that it's not, of course, I can always use a stick to help hold it down. This is gonna be a little lengthy process. Usually, I thought tack downs weren't this involved, but on this one, they've made it go around several times. I should be more worried about getting my fingers nailed by the needle because when I was a kid, I was teaching my sister how to sew. She was controlling the foot pedal, my little sister, and I was guiding the fabric through. Well, I think I told her to stop, but maybe she didn't hear me, so she kept, you know, with the foot pedal and the machine needle went through one part of my index finger and out the other side and broke off what was hanging out like that. It didn't really hurt as much as you would think. My mother about died. She was telling me, lay down, lay down before you pass out. Hurry, lay down. And I'm not sure if she pushed it back out, which I can't believe she would do because she's very squeamish. Anyway. Okay, that has finished stitching. So now I'm going to take these little scissors that are curved like this and just get in here. And it's kind of hard to do it around the camera. But I'm going to go in here and do this as best as I can. Getting up close to the stitching and trying not to cut into the stitching. So I'm going to go the whole way around this. And then when I'm done going the whole way around, I'll meet you back here. Okay, I'm on step number three and it says lay the fabric over the batting and run a tack down. At this point, tear them away the excess material. So here's my fabric I'm going to use, just some blue jean material, as I said. I'm gonna stick this on here. Just put this in my machine. Put that under there. And this is going to take two minutes, according to what it says up here. So I'll just start, that's from a patch I did, no, the hat. I'm gonna start this. And again, I can use my chopsticks to hold this in place if I'd like to. This is a tack down stitch for the fabric. When this is done, I'll trim this fabric and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, step number three is completed. So I'll take this out of the hoop. And once again, I'm instructed to trim this away as close as I can to the stitching. Can you see, or my hand? Without clipping the stitching or without clipping the stabilizer. So just kind of spin it around.
You like to pull this part up a little bit and it helps you to get in there a little bit better. So I wouldn't recommend rough cutting that off. One time I tried that and it didn't help. It made it harder. So, okay, I'll finish this up. It's hard to move around the camera and I'll meet you back here. Okay, I finished now and I'm on step number four, which says to embroider the flower petals. So I'm going to put this back in there. See how I've trimmed that off pretty nicely. Put this back in my machine again and hit go. And this is gonna take nine minutes. So I'm definitely gonna be back. See that, nine minutes. Okay, that has finished. And now I'm on to step number five, as you may be able to see over here. Step number five is going over the circle again for the placement stitch if you want to use some other fabric in here, which I'm not. Remember, I said I'd like my just like that. I don't want another fabric. So stitch number five was the placement. Uh, step number six is the tack down. So I'm going to go ahead and skip those two. So in order to do that on this machine, all I do is hit this plus minus button and I'm going to go ahead two spools, which puts me on step number seven out of 10. And I'll say, okay. And so what that's going to do right now, it's on the gray. One minute, it's going to do the letter B. So that's what we're ready for, the letter B now. Okay, we're on step number, we just finished step number seven, which was embroider the letter. In my opinion, right here, this should be step number eight, embroider the satin stitch for the center, because that's what we're on now over here, step number eight, and it's doing this center around the letter. Then I would switch this to number nine and number 10. Even up here, it's a little messed up. See, eight is the center satin, nine is the back panel so they forgot to put an eight in there so this should be eight nine and ten okay now we're at the important step step number nine it says to remove this from the machine turn it over and place your backing fabric on here pretty side down and like i said if you'd like you can tape it in place just to be extra cautious. I only have the one piece that'll fit, but there you go. Tape it like that. Again, the pretty side is down because you want the right side out. Put this in your machine. And really, as best you can, make sure nothing got buckled up under here. Looks good. So now we're on step number nine which is the placement stitch for the backing. After that stitches, I'll take it back out of the machine and trim around it. Okay, that's finished. So now I simply turn this over and again, trim close to the stitching here. like that all the way around okay that's all trimmed so I'm ready to put it back in my machine and I'll start the final stitching that's going to take eight minutes okay it's finished embroidering isn't that beautiful I love it I think it's beautiful. There's the back. Really cute coasters. Imagine doing it in some springy or summer colors. You could put some fabric in here to spice it up. And it'd be really cute on your picnic table, your table outside, or even on your kitchen or dining room table, wherever. I just know I like to have one outside when I have my coffee early in the morning uh, because my table is metal and it's cold and my coffee gets cold quickly. 
So this is why I decided to use the tear away instead of the cut away. I want you to see the difference. So let's see, here's this. Just tearing it away, that was so easy compared to the other one. And let me show you the first one. Okay, maybe you really can't tell a difference, but right here, you can see where I wasn't able to cut really, really closely, and you can still see some of the cutaway on this one. Can you see that? Whereas this one is just absolutely perfect. And I think it's stitched out perfectly as well. Hey, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Ask questions because I love trying to answer them for you in videos. Again, check out my links down below. I appreciate it when you use them. Bye for now.